Hi, I'm Michael Leo Sentai, and I am an independent filmmaker. I write, edit, direct, and sometimes star in many of my feature length films. Uh, my company is called Glamboy Productions, and we specialize in crazy, over the top, campy horror films. With that being said, most of my films um, tend to deal with um, themes that a lot of times people find a little uncomfortable. Um, they delve into sexuality, religion, politics, most things that people would never want to talk about in a gathering. Well, I just throw those in my films and mix them up with some good horror, gore, and comedy, and that's what you get. You get a Glamboy production. And in a Glamboy production, nothing is off limits in, in terms of um, characters that somebody might play. Um, I myself have played women, I've played old men, um, I've played an Asian man before, which some people found that a little racy, but I approach it um, from a Shakespearean point of view that, you know, anybody can play anybody. I just think that makes things more interesting. Whoever is the best fit for a part, that's who plays it. It's like a theater production in a way, each film. Um, the actors, a lot of times, you know, they might do some of their own costuming. Um, an actor might do, you know, makeup or, or set construction. Um, everyone kind of wears more than one hat. And over the years, I've, I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of great actors um, that I met through various stage productions, um, family, friends, actors that auditioned and, and just happened to be fantastic. But I've also worked with some great um, actors that have been in, in um, recognizable productions throughout the years. Most notably, my, my recent film, um, Easter Holocaust, which was just released um, a week before Easter of 2020. I have cameos from Ari Lehman. Um, you might recognize him um, as playing Jason in the very first Friday the 13th movie. He jumps out of the lake. Um, he did a cameo for us. He was great. We have uh, Lisa Neeld. Um, she's very beautiful and talented herself. She's um, uh, past Playboy model, and then the very um, charming and also beautiful and talented Charity Raymer. You may or may not recognize her off the bat, but she uh, played Belle Black on the soap days of our lives back in the day. So with those three cameos, I, it was really exciting for me to work with those actors. I was also fortunate um, in my film All Hallows Eve Horror to um, include music from actress Tuesday Night, which you may um, recognize her um, in the Nightmare on Elm Street film, A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. She played Kristen Parker. Um, so she allowed me to use um, original music in that film, which was a fan dream also. My other film, um, The Murderous Revenge of Lizzie Stillborn, or just Stillborn, um, I was really fortunate to have actor Ken Sagos who portrayed Kincaid in Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4, he um, provided the um, narration for the trailer for Stillborn. So again, that was very exciting. So how did I get into filmmaking, you might ask? Well, I grew up acting um, in plays, musicals throughout middle school, high school, and then into college. But I always really knew that I wanted to get into filmmaking, either behind the camera or acting. So my years doing stage productions really, I feel, helped me prepare to go into filmmaking. It, it taught me all the basics of um, being aware of your, your body placement, um, you know, basic stage directions, all of which I feel really translate into the world of filmmaking. So I have been making films since 2011 with my first release of the Murderous Rampage of Malachi Stitch. When I went into making The Murderous Rampage of Malachi Stitch, or Malachi Stitch just to shorten things, I really had no idea of what I was doing. I had written a script, I had gotten together actors and figured out locations, and I just began filming. I did kind of go through and um, storyboard some of the shots I wanted. Prior to Malachi Stitch, I knew very little about filmmaking. I knew the types of films that I liked, which have always been mainly in the 1980s uh, genre of horror. But after filming Malachi Stitch, I began the daunting task of editing. I had never edited before, except for in college back in 2001, when we still worked with um, VHS tapes and two different decks that you put your master tape in and a blank tape in, and then you just chose your shots and assembled them and hoped for the best. Well, the world of digital um, 
editing was all quite new to me, but um, I got an editing software program and I just started working. I really taught myself through trial and error. Um, and that's really what I've done with all of my films. Each film, um, I've learned and developed my skills. And what didn't work in one film, I was sure to not repeat the same mistake in the next. But I'm very proud of all of my films. Each one I learned a lot and I was able to grow and I think that with each film I've released they've all shown that growth. Even though I look back at it, my first film, The Murderous Rampage of Malachi Stitch, where I said I, I knew very little about filmmaking, um, yeah there's a lot that I would probably do differently now if I made the film, but I worked with what I had, um, what I was starting to learn, and I'm still very proud of the film. And as I said with each film I learned and I grew and without making each film I wouldn't be able to know what I know today. So yeah, I, I definitely love all my films just in different ways. What advice would I give aspiring filmmakers? Hmm, to think on that for a moment. Mm. I would say to have a strong vision, um, have a great story, um, have good actors, but just go and, and make a film that you believe in. And don't worry about having the best camera, the best microphone, the best equipment right out of the gate. Um, that can come later. Just focus on the main things. If you have a great story, great actors, great camera work, then you're off to a great start. I've seen a lot of filmmakers that have um, such expensive equipment and their film looks great, but a lot of times it's lacking in a creative vision. It, it, it looks great, but the content isn't quite there. So my advice, um, focus on the basics and create a great story and do something you believe in. Do something outside of the box. Um, that's really the spirit of independent filmmaking. Don't ever try to replicate a Hollywood movie on, on our budget, your budget. You know, Hollywood puts out movies that, you know, there's a lot of great things, but you it's kind of expected what they're going to put out. Whereas independent film, you're not held back from a studio dictating what you can and cannot do. So do something outside of the box, something original. I'd also say not to take to heart reviews necessarily from critics. I've seen great filmmakers have terrible reviews of films that I know are great, both independent films as well as feature length films. Everybody has an opinion and so just believe in, in your product. Do something fun. And that's the thing too, I think at the end of the day, if you just have fun making the film, that's all that really matters. And also I would say don't go into um, making a film expecting to um, make a million dollars. It's great to have that as a goal that yeah, your film's gonna be really successful and maybe make some money, but in the world of independent filmmaking, there's usually not a lot of money to be made. You're very lucky if you make back the money that you invested in the film, which that was something I didn't know in the beginning. So always watch your budget. Try to use what you have to the best of your ability. That's kind of what I learned with making my films was to keep the budget down and not go above the budget, you know. Keep your effects in line with the money that you have. And I would also say don't be afraid to collaborate with other filmmakers. I found that the few filmmakers that I have collaborated with that I've learned so much and I hope to think that they learned a little bit from me as well. So yeah definitely don't be afraid to collaborate with others. I would also say be wary of a lot of distribution deals that are out there. It might be really exciting to think to have your film out there and distribute it and on DVD and but be very careful. Make sure that you have lawyers read over any offer that you're given. You don't want to just sell away all the rights to your film and, and not get what you deserve. Um, because as, as I said, there's so many streaming platforms now and you know you don't want to cheat yourself out of um, future opportunities to stream your film. That's my advice. That's what I found in trying to negotiate with um, different distributors. And really streaming is the current. It's it's the future. You know, I think we're, we're definitely getting away from DVDs and even Blu-ray. Um, streaming is definitely the way to go, so keep in mind that streaming may be your best option for distribution in the end once you've made your film and you have it ready to be shown. So, at the end of the day, just make a film that you believe in and have fun doing it 
I know that there are plenty of other platforms besides mainstream Hollywood to have your film showcased. There's Amazon Prime, there's Vimeo On Demand, and there's tons and tons of Roku streaming channels popping up every day. So, as I said, you might not make a ton of money on your film, but there are plenty of platforms out there to have your work showcased. And now, we move on to promotion. These are my six feature-length films that I have right now. Um, the Murder's Rampage of Malachi Stitch, my first film. Stillborn, Lost Campfire Tales, All Hallows' Eve Horror, My Deadly Playmate, and again, Easter Holocaust. All of these films are available on Vimeo On Demand. Um, a great few of them are um, available on Amazon Prime um, and various Roku channels. But, to be sure, you can find them all on Vimeo On Demand all the time. And I am currently in pre-production for my seventh feature-length film, which is a zombie film. I've never done a zombie film. I've done a short zombie film, Undead Manor, which this feature-length film will be based off of that. Up until now, my films have been slasher films, um, a doll film, a creature film. So um, zombies is, is definitely something I've always wanted to tackle and I'm very excited about. The script is already written. It's called Attack of the Radioactive Zombies. It's basically Return of the Living Dead meets Willy Wonka. Hopefully, we'll be in um, production, filming, in August. And if all goes well and we're able to get back to some sort of normal. Thank you for listening to me ramble on and on about all of my filmmaking adventures. And hopefully some of the advice that I gave you, um, you'll find useful in your future filmmaking endeavors. If you'd like to reach out to me um, just to chat um, for um, some filmmaking advice, feedback, you can reach me at malachistitch at hotmail.com or you can contact me um, via our um, Facebook page, Glamboy Productions. Now, get out there and make some great independent films.